Hi. Before you watch this video, I would strongly recommend that you have a look at my two other videos, The Chemist Sudoku Expert in 10 Minutes and Sudoku Expert Identifying Hidden Pairs. I suggest that you watch the first video, The Chemist Sudoku Expert in 10 Minutes, so that you can see my method of annotation for Sudoku puzzles, which if you don't already know it, I'm sure you'll find extremely useful in the basic stages of solving simple and medium difficulty Sudoku puzzles. In the second video, Identifying Hidden Pairs, I take things one stage further and provide an exhaustive method for discovering all hidden pairs that were not identified by the annotation method that I explained earlier. Now in this video you're about to watch, I'm going to show you how you can identify hidden triplets. Hidden triplets do come up occasionally and they can be just as useful as hidden pairs in trying to solve Sudoku puzzles. However, they are very easily missed. And in the particular example I'm going to show you, you'll find that it's the only way you'd be able to solve this particular puzzle. Okay, so here's quite a difficult Sudoku puzzle. I've filled in all the easy numbers and I have actually identified a couple of hidden pairs. For example, there's a a 4 and a 6 here, an 8 and a 9 here, and an 8 and a 9 here. But we're still stuck. And I'm going to show you a way to identify a hidden triplet that's actually going to unlock the key for this particular puzzle. And it's in this column here. So we to analyze this column what we first do is we start off with the numbers we know, 5, 6, 3. So that leaves the unknown numbers, 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9. And now we're going to evaluate each unknown square in this column for the unknown numbers that it cannot be. The unknown numbers that it cannot be. Start with this square here. It cannot be a 1, it cannot be a 9 in the same box, in the same, in the associated row, it cannot be a 4. So we can write 1, 4, 9. In the next unknown square here, again we know it can't be a 1, it cannot be a 9 from the same box, and in the same associated row, we can see that there's an 8 here, or there's an 8 here, which means that there cannot be an 8 anywhere else. So we can write 1, 8, 9. In the next unknown square, in the associated box, there's a 4 and a 7, and also a 2. The 2 is either in this square or this square, but it doesn't matter which square it's in, it stops there being a 2 here. So we write 2, 4, 7. The next square down, exactly the same thing applies. Cannot be a 2, a 4, or a 7. And there are no associated numbers in the associated row. 2, 4, 7. In the next unknown square, same again. 2, 4, 7 in the associated row, and that's it. There's a 9 here or here, but there could be a 9 here. So we can write 2, 4, 7. And in the final unknown number, we know that there cannot be a 2 in the same box. Also, there cannot be a 1. And if you remember, there's a 9 here or here, so there cannot be a 9. So we can write 1, 2, 9. Okay, so now we have to analyze these numbers that we filled in. And what we're looking for, if we're going to find a hidden pair, we'd be looking for 4 the same across 2 spaces, or 2 the same across 4 spaces. And since there's only three numbers filled in in each one, clearly there can't be any of those. However, we're also looking for hidden triplets, and for a hidden triplet you need to have three the same 
in three squares and I'm sure you can see there's a 2 for 7 in this square C cannot be in this square, cannot be in this square and cannot be in this square so what does that mean? that means that if there can't be a 2, 4, 7 there, there has to be a 1, 8, 9 so this square, this square and this square have to contain the numbers 1, 8 and 9 we don't know what order they're in but they have to contain that so how does that help us in this particular puzzle? well, very simply, you can see that this pair of 8's here, there has to be an 8 in this square or this square but if there is a 1, an 8 or a 9 in all of these three there cannot be an 8 here so that means that we can put in an 8 here once the 8 was completed in that square the rest of the puzzle was relatively simple to complete and I didn't need to show you that if you wish to identify triplets in rows or columns with more than six unknown numbers, for example with seven, you would need to find four the same across three squares or three the same across four. If there were eight unknown numbers, you'd need to identify five the same across three or three the same across five. And if there were an empty row or column, you'd need to find six the same across three or three the same across six. All to find hidden triplets. You can find hidden quartets in theory, although I haven't found any myself, but I'm sure they could be useful. This will take you to the hardest of Sudoku puzzles almost. However, there are some puzzles for which even these methods are not enough, and if we wish to solve these, we will need to move into the areas of conditional logic.